On today's episode of Watch JR Go, we're here with my cheap Hummer H3. And in the last episode, of course, we ripped out the transfer case. The transfer case is sitting right over there now. We've got our mess all cleaned up and it's time to make an even bigger mess. Today, we gotta tear out the transmission. Let's go. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jay Ergo, and like I said, I'm here with my 2007 Hummer H3 powered by the i5, the Vortec 3700, and it has a major transmission problem. We're not quite sure what it is yet, but it is puking transmission fluid out of it. Now, I think it's the front pump seal or the front uh, input seal for the torque converter. It's gotta be one of those two. I guess it could be a bad converter. There's, there's a few things it could be, but it's somewhere in the front. It's just pouring out fluid. You can fill it up, it'll leak all of it out. So we gotta get the transmission out. It's time to get back underneath here, get the starter out, unbolt all the fun stuff, unhook the transmission harness, unhook those cooler lines, and then manhandle this transmission out of here. So I've got Eric heading over right now. So we have two people because obviously I have one jack. And a lot of times while you're doing this, you'll end up with the transmission flopping off. It'll push, the pan will push the jack out of the way and then the transmission will fall. We don't want that to happen. We wanna get it out of here gracefully as gracefully as it can be done underneath the thing on jack stands. It's a lot better on a two post. Soon we'll be back to two posting it, but for now I needed to get the Hummer done so I could drive it again. I'm also tired of pedals this big on the garage floor. Uh, this one though, it did come out of the transfer case. I can't blame the transmission for that. It was just tilted for two seconds and that happened. Anyway, let's get underneath here and start tearing this thing apart. You can see the transmission right there supported by the jack. And uh, hopefully this doesn't take more than two or three hours today. We're missing one very critical piece and that is my four foot extension. I forgot that I need to go get that and we might have to make an hour long trip just to go get that extension so we can get this wrapped up. And just like that, Eric's here. So we had to drive all the way to Derby to rob a bunch of the tools out of the real toolboxes here. This toolbox is honestly getting, uh, well, it's a little bit weak because I rebuilt all new tool sets over there at the other building and they were just more specialized. So now we brought our swivel sockets, the Icon, flex head ratchets, just a ton of stuff that we needed along with the four foot extension, which was the main thing that we needed to get this done. Our power torque from our Riley's here. Big boy, three foot, whatever. We also added, you know, another, we brought six foot of extensions from the other shop. So now we're ready to pull a transmission. Let's get under here and get to work. Well, somebody jumped in here and change the transmission and replace the factory torque converter bolts with the wrong bolt. It's a 15 millimeter now, and it's supposed to be like a T50. And you can get your T50 through the inspection slot on the bottom that we looked at earlier, and you can just pull the bolts out, no problem. Well, even with a 15 millimeter crow's foot wrench, we are having no luck getting the converter bolts out of there. Uh, and we also tried our double offset, that pops off every single time. Basically, no matter what we try, we can't get the converter bolts out because they're also insanely tight. I don't know how they did it. So we decided to try old standby, which is pulling the starter out of here. And then we'll just jump in with a, you know, an impact, whatever we can get in here and pull the bolts out that way because we'll have tons of room to access them. Well, the starter won't come out. And now we know that to get the starter out, I, I mean, honestly, I've almost got it out. There's like one bolt holding it in, but I don't see anywhere that you can actually work that thing out of there because the suction line for the AC compressor is in the way. So what everybody does is pull the actual intake off the side of the engine, which looks impossible. Uh, it says that's like a five hour job. So we're leaving the intake alone uh, and we're gonna go back to trying to get the transmission out. I think what we're gonna try now is uh, the wrong way to do it, which is pulling the bell housing bolts, sliding it off of the converter, and then it'll open up our inspection slot so we can actually get a wrench in there and get the converter off. Putting it back should be easier and uh, the wrench won't be slipping off because the bolts aren't over tightened. So that's where we're going now. All the connectors are already off. That took like two seconds. Uh, we just have to get the cooler lines off the side of the transmission and that's it, I think. I've got shifters off, Prindle cables off, um, the main electrical connectors off and that just leaves uh, the vents off. So all we have left is the cooler lines. I'll get their little uh, plastic quick disconnect protectors slid off of there. We'll push in the clips and we should have those out too. And then we're just gonna leave it on the jack, slide the transmission backwards and it's off. Obviously that's not the recommended way to do it. I don't like to pull the converter out that way, but it's the only thing we can do at this point because we're done with the starter. We gotta either take the whole car apart or, you know, do it this way. So those are our options. That's what we're gonna make happen. 
Let's get back underneath this thing. So we just pulled the tin out of the, the dipstick bracket here, which means we should have the dipstick out of the way. And we do. Hey, look at that. All the way out of the way. Cool. All right, that's good to go. And I also just got the clips off the cooler lines, got the cooler lines out. They actually came out pretty well. Usually I have to fight those for a long time, but today uh, I was able to get a pry bar in there and just get a little pry on them, give them a wiggle, came right out. So cooler lines are out, everything's out. We're gonna leave the converter attached, slide the transmission right off of it. That's it's the only way this thing's getting done. That ought to do it right there. Where's my 15? Cool, we're gonna get to it. It's shorter than what you gotta use for a 1994 Z28 Camaro. Oh man, you need at least six foot on the Camaro. <laughs> yeah, I remember. It's impossible. <laughs> All right, you guys can see where we're at now. We got the transmission uh, ready to go as far as I can tell. Every wire, every bolt, they're all off. So now uh, we should be down to a wiggle. And off she comes. Uh, you want to do the pry bar in from up front while I try to grab the back of it here? Ugh. Man, it's not moving. Hey, look at that. It's free. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> well, that was... I don't think... Yeah. Ugh. Careful. Yeah. Careful. We don't have a lot of support there. Ooh. There's all your trains floating. Oil coming from everywhere. Where's it coming from? It's oh, good. It's the it's the pump. Yeah. We knew it was the pump. We were right all along. Um, so now, unfortunately, the jack. Do you, uh, I guess you want me to switch to the jack? No, I can go to the jack. No, 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 no. What do you mean? Well, you have the power to balance it if it starts falling, and I don't. Oh. <laughs> that's yeah. that's why I was like, I need to go to the jack. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming off. All right. Keep pushing the jack towards it. All right, hold on. Uh, if I put the pry bar in there, I might be able to. Well, it's all I'm having to do is push up and pull back, and okay. it's coming out. Okay. Oh yeah, it's completely out. What on earth? Is it out? I mean, basically. Uh, I, was, I was just having that. It feels like it's. Oh, you're already. I see. You're hitting the. I can. I'm hitting the top tunnel. Yeah, it's hitting the tunnel. Here, hold on. Here. There it goes. There it is. I was gonna say. Okay, if we're both under here. And then we move Put that the yeah. jack right there. Okay, she's there free. Oh, she's pouring now. Just let it. Let go. We're able to hold it now. Uh oh. Oh, we're on the way. Where'd the pan go? Oh boy. Sorry. Dropping jack. <laughs> it's coming. I was like, all the weights now here. Oh dear gosh. Can you move the pan at the same time? Oh, uh, the jack's doing nothing. Oh, it's stuck on the shirt. The shirt's inside the jack. Okay, here. Ready? Come my way. Uh, three, two, run from it. Just run away. There you go. <laughs> wow, I'm not sure the shop's ever been this destroyed. Yeah. But it's done. It's finally off. Yeah, it looks like it. Fluid everywhere. It looks like you can just pop the heater hose back on. Oh yeah, we will. Well, in a fun turn of events, something I've never had to deal with before. Uh, obviously, this taking the starter out is not the way to do this. So we started getting the converter bolts out. One was loose, one was medium tight, and one must have been put in with the world's tightest Loctite. So what we ended up doing, of course, was, it's finally cold, and it was twisted off, cutting the torque converter out of the Hummer. Well, obviously we're gonna get a new converter. That has to happen anyway. You figure if you put one of these in and make that old one through the converter or something, you gotta be sure the new one's good. So we're putting a new converter in it. They'll want a core. They can have one that is uh, only has two lugs left on it because <laughs> the third lug is gone. So that's going down and uh, the transmission is out now. We're gonna use that to throw the transmission on so we don't spill any more oil because obviously we've created a gigantic mess underneath this thing but there's the converter the old one that's going away and uh yeah what a wild wild job this is by far the hardest <laughs> the hardest 4l60 drop 
I've ever had to mess with in my life. The transfer case was no big deal, but the transmission itself was actually a kind of a monster of a job. Uh, it just doesn't want to come out. And the, uh, what, the tunnel is a little too small, so the starter hump that's on the wrong side, because this is a special bell housing, it's on the top instead of the bottom, uh, that doesn't want to come out. Uh, a lot of stuff fought us on the way here, but we did finally get it done. I wish I would have recorded sawzalling the converter out, but <laughs> it's done now. There's a lot more cleaning to do, but the transmission is all loaded up and ready to go over to the new transmission shop. I don't even know where it is, but we will figure all of that out tomorrow and get this thing dropped off to the builder and uh, run to O'Reilly's, grab a converter, as you can see, and I'll clean up this mess. And we should be, we should be cooking with gas after that. Let's get this out of there. Cool. Well. That is a terrible transmission pull on a Hummer H3. If you have to do this, hopefully you have the stock bolts in the flex plate still. If they're not there and somebody has changed it to a normal bolt instead of the T50s that are supposed to be in there, it's a disaster. Yeah, I don't know what happened with this thing. It's just, honestly, looking at the mess that we have here, it's just, uh, it, it was definitely done wrong. They went to the cheapest transmission shop. That's what happened. Bell housing bolts? Oh yes, really two, two bell housing bolts missing. Most of them were pretty loose. So a bunch of the tabs for stuff weren't in place. Like, yeah. it was a bit of a mess. So I don't, I don't know that they followed torque specs. They just did the old glug glug. <laughs> they, got, they just put it in. They put it in and that was the end of that. So, we have to put it in right. And we'll get there. We're gonna get this thing all done. It'll be back on the road. I'm excited for that. And uh, she'll be off to her new owner plastic hummer it has more support when the fender liner's in family friend family friend <laughs> all right we just dropped off the transmission it's still going to be about two weeks maybe three weeks uh we got some parts we're waiting on actually um they actually the transmission shop thinks the converter might have been cracked and that's obviously uh, a very real possibility the one that's in there is probably a mediocre rebuild there's so many different like paint colors on that transmission that it, you know, we just don't know. We don't know how bad it is. Uh, and he, he was like, like, it's probably a crack somewhere if it was leaking sitting still. So there's a good chance that's what was going on with it. Uh, either way, it will be back in two or three weeks, all sorted out with a brand new converter. He was like, obviously we're putting a new converter in it anyway. I completely agree. When you do a transmission, you should do a converter. So the 4L60 will be back good as new very soon, two, three weeks. And in the meantime, I got to pull the intake off and change the starter because we tried to take the starter out. And of course it broke the little start terminal off of the starter solenoid there. So new starter, can't hurt anything, right? Nice new parts and uh, probably intake gaskets since that has to come out at the same time. And then we'll put it all back together, slap in this new transmission and it'll go together much better with the proper bolts. Uh, he was like either their round head Allen bolts or their T50s. And I was like, yeah, that's what we expected. Like we've actually had to go read the manual on this thing because it didn't make any sense. He was like, oh yeah, it definitely just had the wrong bolts in the flex plate. It happens. Boy, howdy, do I have one for you guys today. So I have my Goldwing here, 2019 GL 1800, the king of the couches. I love this bike to death. Well, I don't ride it all that much or I haven't in the last two years. I think I've maybe put 500 miles on in the last two years or something like that. And uh, wire strippers are flaking out on me suddenly. Um, it needs a battery. That's where we're at. Yeah, mostly because it sat in the shop and sat in the shop and then I get it back out and uh, it was starting a little bit slow. I've never had this much trouble with wire strippers in my life. We're just gonna try again. That's probably the move. Okay, I don't know what I did wrong the first <laughs> time. <laughs> don't ask me what happened. Anyway, um, it needs a battery. The battery is actually not too bad, $150. It's a pre-activated AGM battery, as you can see here. A Yuasa GYZ20L, and uh, it's, it's a monstrous battery. It's really heavy, and it starts what's well, basically this car engine like that every time. It did great for three years. I can't be upset about that. It was never on a battery tender. I just depended on me riding it. And uh, then I rode it about two months ago, it struggled to start two months ago. I had to put the jump pack on it. And uh, then I was like, oh, it's good. I rode it for like an hour and a half or something. It's gotta be fine to last another month or so until winter's over and then I can get the gold wing out again. Well, it's not fine. I come out, hit the start button. In fact, we'll do it right now. Keys in my pocket. I mean, there's a light here for when the ignition's on. 
it doesn't even light up. It's completely dead. We're talking 1000% dead. So what do you do when your Goldwing has a 100% dead battery? Well, you're in trouble. That's all I can say because this key, of course, is the key for the saddlebags. To open the saddlebags, if the key is in proximity of the bike, it's a proximity key, you push this little button right here, saddlebag opens right up, and then you can pull this cover off of here, and that cover is hiding the battery. So, what we have to do in the event of a dead battery is pull this thing out, and this is really hard to do. I, I did it yesterday, which is why it came off a little bit there. So, you can't pull this off because the cover is held on by the saddlebags, and if the saddlebag's not open, you're just out of luck. So what you have to do here is get your negative from your jump pack on this terminal here, and then you have to get a wire snaked back in there to give you enough power to open the saddlebag so you can take the cover off. <laughs> I'm just real unhappy about this whole situation. There's no remote jump terminal on this. BMW figured this out and added remote jump terminals to their touring bike later, because if you're gonna have electronic saddlebags, you have to have a way to get them open if the battery's dead. So anyway, we're gonna demonstrate this right now. I've got my jump pack. All right, so the negative one, you just snake it on in here like so. I think we've got a good connection. Try not to break your plastic. The, it's not broken, the wrap is trash. The wrap here was overstretched a bit and uh, it's been lifting for years and then it just started finally coming apart there. And we'll add, we'll add our extension cable right here. Set this bad boy up to override mode. Okay, we are in force on. So whatever you do, be careful with this guy because it is live. All right, now let me in. I might not have a good ground yet. Yeah, I'm not getting any power up here. Okay. There it is. We got in. Okay. Now we'll disconnect all of our nonsense here. Well, now you know how to get into your Goldwing in an emergency. I hope your battery never dies. This bike is very, very unhappy if its battery ever dies. So now we'll shut this thing down, pull this cover off of here, get this battery out. Pretty good reason to install, you know, like a permanently attached uh, uh, bolt charger, because then it gives you- Oh, points as yes. Well. Yeah. If, it, if, it, if it's on a battery tender, it's good. And plus the battery would have lasted a lot longer too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd have the battery tender wires. <laughs> yeah, so you could, you could jump through your battery tender Okay, so yeah, you just pull to get this off of here, and now we can finally see our battery, and it looks like we're gonna need a 10 to do everything. What's this? A sticky terminal holder there. All right, let's get this out of here. So there's one 10 right here. Don't drop that screw. Don't drop that. Oh, oh good. <laughs> I, I thought I was about to start welding. It's the negative. You're okay. You can do that. It is the negative. Okay, so that's your battery hold down there. There's your tin. Luckily, they even angled this, so it works out just fine. This should be a pretty easy deal overall. You're going to need a swivel or something if you want to use a an impact on that, uh, or you can just use a straight bit screwdriver to get back in there. We're almost there. All right, we should have this thing out of here now. Pop that terminal a little bit farther off. I wonder how this thing comes out. It almost seems like it needs to be a seat pull, but there's room. It's just not a lot of room. <laughs> the rubber for the bike uh, positive insulator is kind of in the way. There we go. That was trash. I guess we have all new hardware, so we'll use it. This is an activated AGM battery just for the Goldwing. You can see it's literally the Honda one. The dealership said charge this thing to 100% before you install it because it's been sitting on the shelf for about a year, which is unfortunate. If it wasn't activated, it could sit forever, but 
eh, this should be fine. It is an AGM battery and uh, they had it in stock, which is all that matters. I don't know why anyone replaces this hardware. It's like the old hardware is always fine. Single use yeah. only. Yeah, you can't, you cannot reuse this. <laughs> yeah, the terminals are only one sided. So the nut goes in and can't fall out like it normally does. Good going Honda. Can't well, fall out. Yeah, I lost it already. Can't fall out. <laughs> Why is it such a fight? <laughs> that was a fight from beginning to end. All right, we just got the bracket reinstalled there. Uh, and that bracket's kind of nice. It just swings up from the top and you're ready to go. Time to connect the negative terminal, which I assume will be, ah, not too much welding. <laughs> it was actually a pretty chill connection there, which means I have to retighten this one down. Two clicks, three clicks ought to do it. Does she start? Are we back in business? Hey, that's what I like to see. Okay, now all we have to do is put this cover back on. Close the door. took a lot longer than I thought. That was like a 20 minute job to take out literally three volts. But now you know how to do it when your gold wing is 100% dead. It's kind of nice to be able to do. Well, there you have it. The transmission is out of the Hummer. It's crazy that we had to cut the torque converter out. Luckily, we'll have a new one when it comes back in two weeks with that transmission rebuild. Hopefully it's two weeks. If it's three, it might be three. But this thing will be back on the road very soon. Although, starter i gotta put a starter in it now so we'll do that too we'll uh, show you guys taking the intake off of this thing it's gonna be I, I assume a whole ordeal but we're gonna get it done that is it for today guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to head on over to shop watchchairgirl.com for cool shirts like the one i'm wearing under this and please like share subscribe do whatever you want to do and i will talk to you next time i've got a legit mess to clean up here and i've been cleaning for a while <laughs> It's gonna take a long while.